As many of you know from the various videos we've done on this channel, I have a love affair with vintage Kawhi synthesizers. And today I'm excited to present to you what is, I think, the most obscure and cheapest vintage Kawhi synth that you can find on the secondhand market. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Zach Marr from Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications. This is our Alamo Sound Lab channel where we talk about all things music tech related. And today we're going back into the world of vintage synths. It's been a while since we've done videos on them. And I don't know if this technically qualifies as a vintage synthesizer, but it is definitely an obscure keyboard from Kawhi. It is the Kawhi FS800, which is part of, I think, their per early personal kind of keyboard arranger style keyboards that I don't even know what year this is from. I think it's late 80s, early 90s. The Yamaha versions of these were like the PSS series, and there's kind of a fan club and kind of a lot of people that like those. This is, I don't think, sold as well as the Yamaha PSS series. And there's very, very, very little information about them online. But it's definitely like one up from that earliest generation of Arranger keyboards, which took advantage of the kind of development and digital technology through the 80s and the late and the early 90s and really filled in the gap between there was from from the organ world emerged analog synthesizers and analog synthesizers gave birth to digital synthesizers and the kind of organ home entertainment system that had like an all-in-one drums and organ and kind of home entertainment keyboard idea found its way somehow through all that into this arranger keyboard and all-in-one. You have drums, you have backing tracks, you have... Um, lead instrument or kind of accompaniment instrument and you found it in these arranger keyboards which continue on today with I think uh, there's a ton of manufacturers that make them Yamaha's are probably the most uh, common but the uh, PSR series from Yamaha um, I think Corrigan Roland continues to make them I don't think Kawhi makes them anymore anyway this is like first gen of that what's cool and different about this piece is it actually does have a very basic synthesizer that you can program in it. It is made up of two sounds that are PCM sounds and you basically choose the two sounds and then there's an envelope and it's a I think five stage envelope. One, let's see one two three four five. Um, I think it, yeah I think it's a five stage envelope that or maybe it's a four stage I'm not sure it's there's some kind of envelope function so you can do very basic synth programming. And so it really reminds me tonally of the Korg PS800. Um, it's got a very similar flavor and feel. It's got more polyphony. Again, there wasn't a lot of documentation, so I don't know exactly how much polyphony it has. It's got some really cheesy drums. But overall, I think the sound is really nice. And in addition, it has a stereo chorus, which sounds analog to me. Maybe it's just really early digital and very kind of gritty, but it sounds like an analog stereo chorus um, and a little odd mixer section where you can mix, if you're using the accompaniment, you can mix the rhythm, the sounds, um, chord, bass, all that. So interesting little piece of technology. I, again, love the Kawhi sounds and their synthesizers, and I think this one actually doesn't disappoint. I'm curious to see what technology it's based on. They had a bunch of digital synthesizers, the K1, the K4, K5, K3. Um, and I'm curious where this came out in relation to those, because I think that would inform what technology is in this. Also of note, there's no uh, quarter inch outs. There's RCA outs and a headphone out, um, which is really interesting. And I think there is also a, looks just like a sustain pedal, but, I thought that was interesting that it did not even have uh, quarter inch outs, which speaks to its kind of home market target, um, not really targeted for stages and synth playing or, or touring. 
Uh, I got some built-in speakers that sound nice. So let's take a listen and we'll conclude with some final thoughts.
So there you have it. That wasn't my finest demo ever. Um, didn't really get too much into the drum sounds. Uh, the demo is really fantastic sounding. I hit the demo button at one point. Um, but yeah, there you have it. It sounds decent and they're cheap, as dirt cheap, and they're very dirty digital uh, synths, keyboard, whatever. They're like under 150 bucks, so ultra cheap. I saw it at a local store here and I was like, I'll try it out and do a video on it because A, I like the Kawhi synthesizer history and B, it was dirt cheap and what's it gonna hurt? Good video topic. So what do you know? I'm very curious. If you know more information about this, it'd be great to document it. I would love to um, follow up th with, a, with a more in-depth history piece on where this came from and what technology it was using because I think that's interesting and it plugs in the kind of history, Kawhi synth history, which isn't particularly well documented. So drop a comment below if you know more about this, uh, when this came out, what technology is in it. Is it an analog or digital course? would love to find those things out and I was not able to find through looking online. So <laughs> thanks for watching today. And if you didn't already, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications for future videos if you would like to see more. And if you want to contact us, go to our website at alamomusic.com. We'd love to talk to you there. Thanks again for watching.